One of the more difficult things that I had an issue learning when I first got started using Corel Draw was understanding the shaping docker. Now this docker is available from Windows, Dockers, and Shaping. Mine is already open so I'm not going to click it again or it'll disappear. You can also access the shaping tools from the arrange menu shaping. They're all available right here. So I've set up a sample file to kind of show you what each one of these do. I'm going to start with weld. Just zoom in a little bit so we can see everything. And I've got my shaping tool open here. I'm going to select weld. Now right now I have the two checkboxes here unchecked. I'll show you how each of those work as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the word weld and I'm going to click the weld to button and then I'm going to click this underline button here. So as you can see what it does is it welds the word to the line on the bottom which can be interesting for making freestanding signs or something like that. I'm just going to hit undo here and show you what the different check boxes do. The first one that you click is called the source object. So if I want to leave the original source object, I would check this. Now I'm going to hit weld to the line again. And now if I move this around, my original lettering is still there, but the little line is missing. So that's what happens if you click source object only. I'm going to undo this. Now I'm going to select target object and I'm going to do the same thing again. Weld this to this and if I slide this up and out of the way you'll see that the letters and the line still exist. So that's what these buttons leaving the original allow you to do. So I'm just going to leave this welded here. I don't need to keep my originals and so on and so forth. Now we have that weld function. The next one is trim. So what trim does is it lets you trim one from the other. So in this case I want to trim the letters from the background. So the background would be my source object and I want to hit trim and I want to hit the letters. In this case I did it a little backwards. I need to choose the letters first, hit trim, and then the background. So what it does is it trims the letters out of the border that I've made. Again if you leave source object checked or target object checked, your box and your word trim will remain as separate elements as well as this being one element here. I'm not going to show the source in the original for each one. I think you get the idea of how that's going to work. Now the next one is intersect. That's kind of an interesting one. So I'm going to drag this box over here a little bit and just kind of have it halfways on the letters. So I'm going to hit intersect with the letters and I chose the box first and the letter second. So what happened there is it only took what was inside the box. If I reverse that and I choose the letters first and then choose intersect with the box, it's going to give me more of an outline type view, but it's still going to keep just the letters inside of that box instead of a solid element. So that basically shows that you can use either one item or the other as your first element and the second element. In this case if I wanted to I could click that fill it in and I'd still have the same kind of letters filled in. So it really doesn't matter which order you do this particular one in. The next one is the simplify and the simplify is basically kind of a trim function. It works very similar to the, the, to the trim function that I just showed you above, or 
Yeah. Except this one, you just you don't have to select one or the other first. You just select both items and hit apply. And then if you pull it off to the side, sorry, I forgot to deselect one. You pull that one off to the side. That's what you're left with. It just works a little bit differently from trim, but very, very similar. Now the front minus the back is kind of interesting. What it basically means is whichever layer is in front of or behind of the other layer. So in this case, the green box is in front of the front minus the back. If I wanted to change that order, I could click, right click on the box, change order, and I'm just going to move it to the front of the page. Now my letters are still there, as you can see when I do a drag, but they're behind the green box. Another way that you can do moving the order of the layers is you can hold your control key down and you can press page down or page up. And that will actually change the order layer by layer instead of just jumping it to the front or jumping it to the back. So in the case of this one, I'm going to make sure that I have the front minus the back selected over here. And I'm just going to highlight both the green box and the words front minus back and hit apply. And as you can see, since the green box was in the back, basically means that the words front minus back minus whatever is a, is surrounding the green box. So it got rid of the word minus. And the back minus the front works the, basically the same way, except in reverse. So again, check over here, back minus front, hit apply, and the only word left is minus. And it also cuts out the lettering. Boundary is kind of cool. Let's say you've turned this word boundary into a sign. And you want to cut out each of the letters for whatever purpose. All you have to do is click on the word boundary. And make sure you select boundary over here. And then just hit apply. All you're left with is the cutout for that without affecting the inside of the letters. One additional interesting little Docker menu, so to speak, that I like to play with a lot is the um, menu for contour. I'm not going to go into detail on all of these. This is the main option right here, the contour steps that I use. So let's say, for example, in this case of the word boundary, we wound up getting the exact boundary of the of the word boundary of all the letters. I'm going to actually undo this and go back to the shaping menu and I'm going to leave the original object. So once again I'm going to hit select the letters and hit boundary. So now I've got the boundary lines here. Drag those down a little bit so you can see them there. And I'm just going to change the color on those to red. And uh, again, I'm also going to go to another menu item here, which is object properties. I'm just going to make this line a little bit thicker so it's a little easier to see. Yeah, let's do half a millimeter. So, and. Just for good measure, I'm going to grab one of the nodes and set this right back on top of the word boundary. So as you can see, if you zoom in really close, it's right tight with the letters. So now if I go back over here to that menu I was in before, which is the contour menu, 
Let's say I want to cut out each of these letters, but leave a little bit extra on each on, on the outside of each letter. So in this case, I go to the, the contour menu and I want to create a contour to the outside of whatever's selected. I'm only going to do an offset of 0.01 of an inch and I'm going to hit apply. Well, now you can see I got an extra line around there, but the red line is still nice and tight to the letters. So what I can do here is I can right click on this and I can break the contour apart. Now each of these lines is separate because if I do undo here, you can see if I move this, they're actually joined together. So again, I'm going to break that contour apart and I'm going to change that color as well once I select it. Selecting always helps and make that one green. So now I've got a re red lines and green lines. At this point, I'm now going to get rid of those red lines that were created with the boundary tool. So here you can see, now if I were to use that as the cut line on the laser, I'd have a nice little yellow border around it. That way it would match anything inside the other letters. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.